Hello and welcome back to Confessions from the Back Seat. If you listened to the last week's episode, thank you very much and thank you again for joining us. It's a new week. It's a new week of annoyances. Um, what's upset Carl? What's upset myself? This week we'll be going through and uh, if you've got any additions, any suggestions, you're more than welcome to send us an email or like us on Facebook and we'll have all the details at the end. There's a few stories I'd like to tell you about today. I mean... Uh, I've got to be honest, I, I do believe uh, it was ma mainly my grievances in episode one. So I, I'm quite interested what's upset you this week. Well, th there's, a, there's a few things, Carl. I mean, the, the first thing is... I'm on social media, as most people are nowadays, and as you do, you read through your your timeline and you read through what's going on, and I have a news feed, so I read through that and what's going on, and I know we all do his bit, we've all got to do his bit for the environment, and we've all got to do his bit for, but when Mr Branson suddenly decides... This really upsets you, doesn't it? I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Because we travel, I have a diesel car. It was the government a few years ago. Diesel cars are the fabulous thing. You need to buy one. So I bought a diesel car. It, it, I travel around a lot. It's more economical on fuel. So it, 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 you know, it was good for me and it was good for the government at the time. Now, Mr. Branson suddenly decides that 2040 isn't good enough to get rid of diesel cars. He needs to bring it forward. When's he I, asked it to be brought uh, forward? To? 2025. Right, okay. So really, not that long away. I mean, it's 2018 at the moment. And, you know, so it's a few years away. I mean, and I just bought a new car the other year. So it's, you know, it's one of those things that I, I, I weren't even thinking of, of, of changing my car. But now... I'm going back not long ago. They were encouraging you to buy diesel vehicles, they were, weren't they? Yeah. So anyway, so Mr. Branson decides in his wisdom that it's not, it, we need to bring it forward. And I can understand we all need to look after the environment for the future generations and I, I can't argue with that whatsoever but when the person that has an airline he has a train company he's been a multi-millionaire for a lot longer than I've been around on the planet so I'm guessing he's had the fast cars he's had the private jets he's had everything else his carbon footprint is going to outweigh the most of Manchester I believe you are correct so when he's telling me I have to get rid of my car because he feels like it needs to be sooner, and he he's riding around in his own, he's building rockets. Y your voice is getting higher pitched. It is getting, getting higher pitched. It <laughs> is getting, getting higher pitched. Upset. You do this in the car. I know. I know. I can always tell when you're really upset about something. But it, I, I, I kind of feel like it's always you know, pushed down to the little man. You know, oh, I've got to go and buy. Um, energy saving bulbs takes 10 minutes to light up a room it does yeah I go to on holiday to Las Vegas them bulbs are on 24-7 millions millions of bulbs so my energy saving bulb at home is what it's going to make a massive difference it's making no difference it's not and I understand we've all got to do his bit and I've all but do you know when you just look at something you think that man has that man sat down and gone Maybe I should do something first. No, I think it's all about... It's nothing about energy saving. They just want you to live in the world of dim. <laughs> <laughs> I live in the world of dim most days, I'll be honest. Because uh, those energy saving light bulbs, they're not, they're not bright, are no, they? No, no, they're not. They're, they're not. It's, but we have got to do it. And in 2025, if it comes around, I'll have to change my car. And I understand. And Richard Branson will still have a big one. And he'll still have his multi-car garage with all his 1967 elite supercar that's V8. and. It's not just annoying you this, it's upsetting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, can say, I think you should move on. What else this week has upset Andrew Dean? Well, I'm moving out at the moment. I'm aware of that. I've been moving house for a while now. I've been aware of that. We've sold our house. The woman that's buying our house. 
I think I'm laid back calm. The, there's no word to describe how laid back she is. It's took her three days to go to the estate agents. And she doesn't live that far away. Really? No. Maybe she does walk very no, no. slowly. I wouldn't mind if it was a different country. But she, yeah. So it, it's a long process. They say it's the stressful thing, don't they? They say it's the most stressful thing you can do. Divorce, moving house, having children. They say it's all stressful. It's stress. Life's stressful. Every but, day. Yeah. But it's it's one of those things where you've just got to get... Living out of boxes. I'm living out of boxes at the moment. But you're quite enjoying that, aren't you? Not really, no. <laughs> no. And I don't, I don't know why you'd say you, that. Because you've not mentioned it at all. No, I haven't. I've not. Away, I've not. From, away from the podcast, you've not mentioned living out of boxes no, to no. me. No, no. I enjoy... Looking, living out of boxes. I enjoy looking for something for nearly two hours that's in a box, under a box, under another box. Because what happens is things get moved and put away and they've got to be. But when I need it, I can't find it because it's not in a place where it should be. But when you move, everything's in your boxes. It is everything in the boxes. But it, oh. but it's nearly over. It is. It is nearly it's gonna over. It's going to be done soon, isn't it? It is. And we, we should move at the end uh, end of this month. So and it's then, not too bad. So you, 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 the lady that's annoying you, it'll all be done and done. Once you've moved, you don't have to think about it again, oh, do you? Yeah, no. It, I won't have to think about it again, but... It's just very stressful when... Because we're in the middle. We're, somebody's buying our house, we're buying another house. So we're getting messages from the people we're buying from and they're going, oh, can you do this, can you do that? And then we're trying to get hold of the other person and it's just all very stressful. So I, I, I got to the point last week where I said to my other half, the fabulous Claire, I said, Claire, I'm resigning myself from dealing with it. You have to deal with it and I'm going to bury my head in the garden. And that's what I went and did. Well, I didn't literally go and bury my head in the garden. I went and nutted the wall for about five minutes because it was the only way I could express myself. Well, you have told me that, and that just explained something. <laughs> what, the big, the big <laughs> bruise on my head? <laughs> the dirty mark on your head. I just wondered where that came from. No, well, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things. But it, it happens, and it, it's about getting older, and I've realised that I think true wisdom is as you get older, you know nothing at all. And I, I learn something new every day. And it's not always good. It's normally something that annoys me or upsets me. Well, just to take your mind off Go moving on. house, has there been any news stories this week that you've uh, covered? Because I think in episode one, we talked about Tito and his magic golden tickets that got, oh, him, we got did, you into yeah. heaven. Yeah, we've not had a follow-up from Tito. He's not selling anything else. Good-looking guy, wasn't he? Not really, no. no <laughs> I wouldn't. I mean, I, I'm no oil, oil painting, but uh, he... Uh, Tito definitely. and his wooden tickets. I thought that was quite a good story. If you don't know it, don't, make sure you uh, listen to episode one. Yeah. It's well, enlightening, it's not, isn't it? It's no Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> There's no happy ending at the end. Well, it might be for Tito in prison, but that's a different, <laughs> a different story. I'll tell you what we did have in the first episode... What was that? We had uh, that that guy that really annoyed me um, when it was we were doing really good deeds in Manchester. We had a Prat of the Week, didn't we? We did. Has, have, have you come across anyone this week that's upset you or you thought, he's the one? There's always one. Well, we talked about the woman that's dealing with the uh, buying the house. I mean, I wouldn't say Prat of the Week, but she was close. Yeah. Is she um, your one? The one this week? Yeah. Oh, I did. I, I I went. I treated my good lady for a meal out on. Well, it was a Tuesday night, I think. It was midweek. Must have been a special occasion. Well, it was. It was. We uh, we decided not to uh, dirty our pots at home and go and eat out. So we were that. We went. Well, out. all your pots are in cardboard boxes. Well, yeah, they? that's true. And they're all in. Yeah, darn. <laughs> So they're all. Uh, so we go out. Do you want anything to eat? We've got a one pack. Yeah. So we go. Out. <laughs> She's even packed the fridge. So <laughs> we go out for a meal and we go to the bar, order a few drinks, and the lady, I buy a pint of Guinness. Claire has a lime and soda, and we get a fruit shoot for the little one. Right. So it comes to fourteen pounds for a Guinness. A Guinness. Yeah. A cordial. A cordial. And a, and fruit, a fruit shoot. shoot. £14? So, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I said to the 
the woman that served, I say, can I just double check? And she goes, oh, I'm ever so sorry. I've double charged you for one of the drinks. I said, fine, no problem. I still can't do the maths. Well, neither could I. I don't think she could. <laughs> so then she said, oh, I owe you four pounds. So she opens the till, gives me two pounds back. And I said, did you owe me four pounds? She went, I did. Hang on a minute. I owe you another two pounds. She goes in the till again. She opens it, gives me two pounds and takes two pounds off me. <laughs> and I went, what are you doing? She went, I owe you two pounds. And I must have been stood at the bar for about ten minutes just going, what's going on? And then she said to me, she went, you've got to have them out of plastic uh, glasses. And I said, it's a Tuesday. Why? She went, we've no room to wash up. So I had to have a pint of Guinness out of a plastic... I felt like I were at a football stadium. It cost you £12. Yeah. Well, it, no, it, it, ended up, end, but... it ended up about £8 something in the end because she, she got it wrong and she charged us and she'd messed about with it. But, you know, when you look at somebody and you just think... I'll say, Andy, I, I've just listened to that story and in the end, if you do the math, you, you were charged £12. I probably was. <laughs> I probably was. I, she was probably related to one of the highwaymen. So is she is she your Pratt of the Week? I would say... Would you like to say what establishment this was no, at? No, no, no. Would I wouldn't like to say the establishment because you never know, I might go back in yeah. and I want I want my drinks to be... That was a little bit like me not wanting to update, de, upset DJs last Yeah, week, well, I it? think you did. I think I've, you did. I, I believe I've upset a few from the comments I've had. Well, Carl, I just think for the next few gigs that you do, they won't be able to hear anything. You'll be fine. Anything else? Anything else that's upset you? Uh, it's been quite a quiet week this week. Right. I mean, there's been yeah, a few... You've been waiting to move house, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I've been waiting to move house. But dealing with the estate agents and things like that, I mean, I can't really... People know what estate agents are like. You know, they're, they're, they're good for some things, they're not good for many other things. And Are you using one of the internet... Estate no, agents no, 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 are no. using one to charge you fees. They, no, we're paying fees. I pay fees because I feel like if I pay them, I've got a full right to complain. Okay, and you do. I do complain. A lot. <laughs> I do complain, yeah. I mean, but on the on the plus side, if they do a good job, I will say they do a fabulous job. Yeah. I don't do it often because not many people do a fabulous job. But when I feel the need to complain, I complain. I, I mean... I didn't pay for BT for nearly 12 months. Because you complained. Because I complained. And yeah. they give me a credit. You've got to get in refunds, actually, aren't you? Yeah. I've, I've heard you talk about that before. Yeah. I mean, At most length. banks, most banks, if you complain... Why are you laughing? Because <laughs> as I said, at length, I knew you were going to start talking about the banks now, that's all. <laughs> if banks do something and mess up, they have an allowance to give you to compensate for your time and things like that. Yeah. But they don't tell you this. The most they can pay you back for one incident is £50. Right. And and that's one of those things. So if you complain and you go, what can you do to make it make things better? Mm. They won't tell you this, but they can go, we'll credit your account with so much. And it's £50 the most they can credit you. It's their discretion whether it's up to £50. Mm. So, but if you kick off and off, they give you £50. So... You know, is this a public information? It's a public information. <laughs> yeah, kick off with your bag. Yeah, you'll get fifty quid. Yeah, they make lots of money on our money. They need to. Okay. They need to make sure that they they do the right thing. And they're shutting all the branches anyway. Well, don't say that. Claire's just got a job to bank. <laughs> Carl, what are you doing? Do you know? I know? Don't say that. We just bought a house. Here's one for you. Go on. Are you only good at bowling? No. So no. if you would have asked me that question, ask me that question. Are you any good at bowling, Carl? Oh yeah, I'm really good at bowling. Or so I thought until last week. Yeah. So it was my uh, daughter's birthday. All right. And, if, and I thought we'd go bowling. I thought that was a cool thing to do. Yeah. And um, I, I, if you would have said to me, "Is there a sport that you think you're quite good at mm. that you've not done for a while?" I, we used to go bowling a lot. It used to be pretty good. Yeah, we were popular in the seventies. Yeah, I, and I was good in the seventies, early eighties. In your prime, definitely in my prime. But uh, went to a that's not Amazon Prime for people that are listening. <laughs> when 
when I, you were you younger. Know, I love the fact you go explain that. You say Prime, everyone jumps into. And what's he talking about? Yeah, next day delivery. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought I was going to be as good as I remembered because it's only throwing a ball down a lane and yeah. a load of skittles, isn't yeah. it? Really. Um, first of all, those balls have got heavier. Okay. Very heavy balls. <laughs> and stop it. This. Um, and then, oh, it's not as easy as it looks anymore. No. Um, no, I was. Well, the I eyesight's wasn't, going, Carl. I wasn't very good. But you mentioned the eyesight, and this is where it's not just that I wasn't good mm. at the bowling. Um, it upset me that the signage was not great as well. Yeah. Because, you no, know, it tells you that if you step over the line, not to step over the line, because you've, it's a foul. What they don't tell you is if you step over the line, it's like a greasy pole, it's like ice. And you'll end up flat on your back halfway down the lane. <laughs> That's went, actually happened. Yeah, you were throwing I, my, the ball and you went over the line and ended up halfway down on my back. And then, and no one says, "Are you okay?" No one says that. They just go, they just laugh. People just laugh. And I, and it, when you go backwards, you put your hands down, don't you, to stop yourself. For, so you feel like you broke your wrists. Right. You hurt your neck. Yeah. You're rolling about in agony. Nobody, not one person, said, "Are you okay?" I think you're just lucky that nobody was taking a video. I but think that's probably the... Then the other thing that happens is, because you're on the slippy stuff, Yeah. when you stand up, what do you do? You slip over again, don't you? You fall up. So it turns into, it just turns into something off the wacky races. I'm not. I, that's another, that's another very old cartoon that probably no one's ever heard of. It's wacky got, races. It's got dastardly and muttly in it, then. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> do you remember? He is available. Do you remember Mullet? <laughs> Carl, if he wasn't doing what he does now as a magician, he, he could quite happily become a an impersonator. I mean, he does some fabulous. 1970s cartoon characters. He does some. Yeah, he'll be telling you about Phil Cool next and Neil and Pace. <laughs> Google them. Is, You'll have to Google them. Is the, that is is that not current? No, no, not at all. <laughs> you can get them on that interweb thing. <laughs> I don't want to watch a little, <laughs> little bit of retro. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the. We're not old. We're retro. That's the thing. I, I believe. I'm, oh, by the way, tomatoes are coming on well. Your tomato. Well, I just there we go. It. Yeah. I mean, I think that's going to be a running theme through the the podcast. I well, think. I know people are interested. So <sighs> peas are ready for cropping as well. So we'll have some peas next week. There we go. If if anybody would like uh, a, a a punnet of Carl's peas. Put it a peas. Do, do you ever put it a strawberries? Do they not come in? What, what measurements do a peas come in? Pods. Do you got a pod of peas? That's not going to fill anybody up. A pod of peas. What do you get? Four you just peas. Harvest in a, it. You harvest in a basket, don't do you, you? Do you get four peas in a pod? No, no, about Are eight. We, eight? Yeah. Oh, right. Sorry, I apologise. So it's a la carte then. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, go on, one more. There must be one more thing that's got you a story this week that you can't believe. That was a long pause. <laughs> He's the- had enough. This movie now is really, really getting to him. So, <laughs> Yeah, Don. I, I came here to forget about the move and, and, and talk about nice things. and Well, not nice things, but things that have upset us and things like that. But, yeah, I didn't think you were going to mention the move because it it, it is, it's... It's draining at the moment. Yeah. So it's. Do you know that two-hour drive we had last week? Yes. It is all you talked about. I know. I know it was, and I feel like I do feel like you've held back as well, because you said a lot more to me in the car than you have. I swore a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like if anybody ever listens to this, that's been part of the move, they might not appreciate it. It's. I, I get that. So yeah, the I mean, what's with the long pause? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big dog. Is that a dog? <laughs> oh dear, that was a terrible joke. No, um, this week I think we've all been very co- very interested about the whole Trump Kim Jong Un thing. I think it's one of those things that you can't help but be interested in. It's. I just think it's a meeting of the minds. Do you know my favourite thing about that was the picture that people kept putting on the internet of um, pictures of Jackie Chan 
and I don't know the other actor's name, and it just looked like a younger version yeah. of Trump and Un. And Un? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Have you seen these things about the, the Simpsons that have been going about where the people are thinking that the creator of, of The Simpsons is some sort of time traveller. Well, I've seen the one them where they come down the on the escalator yeah, yeah. and there's actually a picture years um, and years later yeah. of virtually exactly the same well, thing. Well, there's a picture of... of um, is what, it the... Homer with Kim Jong-un? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a picture that's flying around and it's Donald Trump, it's Kim Jong-un mm. and it's um, a Saudi guy in, in the traditional Saudi where all round like a, a crystal ball almost. All right. And then if you look, the Simpsons have done a similar picture, but even down, the, they've got them in the right place, but even down too, in the background, where there's a woman, there's a woman in the background, and there's a guy in a suit, and it... I mean, if it's if it's well, do you right, know what? Wouldn't it be great? I, I like to look at that the other way around. Wouldn't it be great if Trump was a massive Simpsons fan? And he's just recreating all that. And he's on purpose recreating <laughs> all. <laughs> that, that would be genius. So basically, he's not working towards so <laughs> world peace. He's working to an episode of Simpsons. Episode. So everyone say that the Simpson guy's the genius. But actually, Donald Trump's the genius. Recreating episodes and scenes from the Simpsons through the years. I think from that, if we've got a toss-up between... Donald Trump's a genius, <laughs> or we believe in time travel. I've got to be honest, you time travel. Time, yeah, travel. time travel is going to be the most <laughs> most logical explanation. I don't think genius and Donald Trump come into the same sort of category. Mind you, saying that he might try and sue us now. <laughs> I mean, you could have me new house if you want, Donald. But there we go. Anyway, I think that pretty much sums up everything we spoke about this week, doesn't it? I think so, I think so. Tales I mean, from the road, confessions from the back seat. Yeah, we've not really done much back seat this week. It's been no. more sort of front seat driving into the news. Well, if you'd been sat in the back seat of my car, you'd have, you'd have heard me waffling on a little bit and getting angry. But uh, well. it's, it's all good fun. So it's, uh, it's, been, it's been fun. It's emotional. Well, join us next time when we discuss more about what's upset us, what's been going on in our lives, if you're interested. If you're not, you can just laugh at us. Yeah, we've got, Oh, we've got an email address now. We have got an email address. You can contact us on the email address. And what is it, Carl? It's... It is cftbseat at gmail.com. That's cftbseat at gmail.com. So any comments you've got... Please let us know. Yeah. Keep them clean. And Carl, you don't need to repeat it. They can always rewind. Oh, they can do. That's technology, yeah, isn't it? It is. We're going to have a Facebook page as well, aren't we? We are going to have a Facebook page, and uh, the address will be after the show. Um, if you want to leave a comment, if you want to leave something that we can discuss, you can pop that on there. We'll try and upload all the stories we've talked about so you can see what we're actually going on about and not making it up. And uh, hopefully you'll join us next time when we talk about more things that have upset us and more stories from the road. Thank you. <laughs>